Hey, what's up gamers? So for the three previous episodes, I was trying to make an Atari 2600 game. In my last video, I finally had something that could be called as a game, but still it was far from what I wanted. So let's see what improvements I've made since then. As you see, I had this beam to chase the player, but that's not how it's supposed to be. I wanted to somehow draw different color tiles to represent the lava, but apparently the playfield of the 2600 is supposed to be of one color by scan line. This time I've decided to base my screen drawing on three scan lines. Two scan lines for the different color playfield tiles and the third for the sprites. I thought why not to give it a try. It should be simple enough and it would not require for me to rack my brain while thinking how to fit sprites and the playfield on the same scan line. So I tried to draw another playfield scan line using the same data from the screen map. Now the map and the character are even more stretched out. But it's not that bad I guess, is it? Do you remember what the character looked like when I started to work on this game? Oh wow! Since I freed up a lot of memory in the previous episode, I had almost enough to add a duplicate of the screen map for the lava. So once I did that, I was left with only few bytes of free memory. Again. So we have the lava map in place. Let's draw the ground and the lava separately. Now as you see the map tiles are very sparse. I think they are almost as sparse as in the Mr. 2 game. Actually, let's compare them. Yep, they are identical now. I haven't analyzed its code but I think Mr. Do probably does some extra work between those lines. Meanwhile, I don't do anything. After the map was stretched, it wasn't hard to notice the problems with ladder placement and the score digits. Although I managed to fix the ladders by deleting one line of code, it wasn't that easy to fix the score. The score glitched when a certain number was present. 7 for instance, which was very odd. Also, I've noticed that the problem could be fixed by moving the digit data in the source file, which is even more odd. But the score was not that important for me at that moment. I wanted to animate the lava. I had to change the tile colors, even though in the prototype yellow ground seemed okay. But now the yellow tiles blend with red a bit too much. So now the ground is blue. I modified the lava logic that instead of moving the ball sprite, the game would gradually fill the lava map and it would appear that the lava is flowing. I've created similar lookup tables in ROM like I did for the ground mining. Only difference is that the bits are inverted since we want to fill those playful bits and not clear them. At first I ignored the ground tiles and the lava flowed freely from the left side of the screen to the right and vice versa by slowly descending down. Then I added a check to look for the holes in the lower row and if they are present the lava's coordinate is changed. So it would appear that the lava is seeping down through that hole. It was funny how the lava breaks the system when you don't limit its flow and it flows out of the bounds of the lava map. Then I added additional checks so the lava won't flow if there is a wall on its way. If that happens, the lava should change its direction. If the lava is contained, you don't even see how it moves. But once the containment is broken, it will reach you in no time. Sure, the logic behind the lava's behavior doesn't make much sense. But it's fine by me. Come on, it's an entire game. Did you expect some realistic fluid simulation? 
While working on the Lavas logic, I've noticed how writing more code affects the score digits. As I said, the certain numbers causes the whole score to glitch, as if to load the graphics for those numbers takes more CPU cycles. Apparently, that's exactly what was happening. The thing is, the ROM is divided into 256 byte pages. If your sprite graphics are somewhere in between those pages, the CPU will add an extra cycle when you cross the page boundary using the indexing. So to avoid that, you need to align your data to the pages. It is very important since the drawing code is very sensitive to additional CPU cycles. My biggest mistake was that I haven't specified the origin of my data in the ROM. So my graphics data and various tables moved through the pages when I wrote some additional code. So now I specified the origin and my data now starts at a specific page and stays in one place. Another alternative is to use a align directive at the beginning of your data. So the data would always start at the beginning of the page. So I have the lava that moves like I want. I have my ladders and score. Now how about adding some sound effects? How the heck the 2600 makes sounds anyway? Apart from the graphics, the TIA chip is also responsible for the sound generation. There are two sound channels, so you can play two sounds simultaneously. You can even modify the 2600 to output stereo sound. Note this won't work on PAL models. Each sound channel could be tweaked with three registers. The sound type register takes a value from 0 to 15, which sets the type of the sound. That doesn't mean there are 16 different sounds, though. Some of the sound types are repeated with some bass frequency variations. The volume register also takes a value from 0 to 15. So by writing 0 to it, you can silence the channel. And by writing 15, you can make your sound very loud. The frequency register lets you adjust the pitch of your sound. The value range here is from 0 to 31. The bigger the value, the more bass frequency of that sound type is divided. If the value is 1, the bass frequency is divided by 2. Once you activate the sound, it will stay on, so be careful. You can turn it off by setting volume to 0 or simply by setting the sound type to silence. I added a fun sound effect when the lava catches the player. Let's listen how the different sound types will sound. Probably I could make some music with all this, if I knew how it's done. But since I'm musically challenged, the sound effects will be more than enough. Plus I read that it's difficult to match actual musical notes to the 2600 sounds. So I'm not gonna bother yet. While testing the game, I've noticed that there is a bug that lets you fight the lava with your axe and increase your score tremendously and the lava won't even kill you. Apparently that happened because the mining had a higher priority than player's collision with the lava. So it wasn't hard to fix. I tried to tweak the ladder's generation because previously the ladders arranged themselves into a line and it looked weird. So I tried to force a new ladder to keep at least 3 tile distance from a ladder on previous row. I think it worked fine, but it made all rooms look almost the same. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Probably I will need to spend even more time with the ladder generation. To prevent accidents when I got stuck while climbing the ladder, I made that when you collide with the ladder while pressing down, your X coordinate is changed 
to perfectly match the ladder. While it's a nifty feature, it created a bug where you could go through the wall by repeatedly pressing down plus direction. And this way you could completely avoid the lava. Luckily I managed to fix this. Also as a new addition was the lava's speed. So compared to the previous death ray, the lava increases its speed of every room. So with each room it gets harder and harder to escape from. To make things a bit easier I gave the player 3 lives. I think the lives bar appearance could be improved a bit, but it will do for now. After that I spent some quality time with the game score. Unfortunately I could not make it perfect, but I think it's way better now. For some reason now the sixth digit repeats the fourth, but I could bet nobody will get a four digit score in this game anyway, so nobody's gonna notice that. As a final change I added some colors to the player's character. Basically I created an array in RAM where each element is a different color for the every sprite's line. Surprisingly I found some free CPU cycles to set the colors from this array onto the player sprite. It looked ok on the emulator, meanwhile on the real hardware it kind of feels like the character is running around in his boxer shorts. I personally still prefer the minimalist ghostly white character, which stands out more. But what do you think? Looks like that's enough changes for now. The game seems even more playable than the last time and I like it way more now. Sure it's not perfect and it still requires polishing and bug fixing. Also I have a feeling that something fundamental is still missing. I don't know about you, but for me it gets very tedious to mash the button continuously while trying to run away. And sometimes even that doesn't help when the lava gets really fast. I was thinking to add some sort of hidden bonuses that give you some extra points and also freezes the lava for a second. I think I need to do some reading on game design since it's my weakest skill. Then perhaps I will have a better understanding what to change. And if you are interested to see those changes, then subscribe so you won't miss my upcoming videos. As always, you can find my game's source code and my git repository on GitHub. The game's ROM is also there. As always, I put the links in the video's description. So thanks for watching and... See you in the next one. Bye.